Why am I promoting my website? I'm not a follower of any particular politician or conservative commentator, author, blogger, but I do obtain information from dozens of sources and I draw my own conclusions. My website is very focused on one topic and that is the growing body of evidence that so-called liberals, so-called leftists, were in fact very much manipulated, controlled, influenced, misled, confused, used by hardcore communist acting covertly, secretly, stealthfully. In other words, the hardcore Marxist, Leninist, Stalinist, Maoists actively manipulated American liberals and kidnapped their minds and employed them as pawns, as useful idiots in this ongoing war, war, war between the followers of communism and the followers of freedom, democracy, and capitalism. The evidence on my website comes from defectors from this evil system. The evidence on my website comes from people in the know, people very familiar with the tactics and methods used by the hardcore Marxists to plant disinformation, distortion, and to manipulate unwitting American liberals. On my website I mention about five names of such defectors Eon Pasipa, Vasily Matrokin, Yuri Bezmanov, and finally the the scholarship of very credible historians and political science professor Harvey Clur and John Earl Haynes who have written numerous books on the subject of American communism. My website presents evidence of communist subversion. But presents no conclusion. The conclusion is up to you. One of my sources of information is the team of Harvey Clur and John Earl Haynes. Here they're being interviewed on Front Page Magazine, an excellent source. Harvey Clur is the is a professor of politics and history at Emory University, and John Haynes is the 20th century manuscript historian at the Library of Congress. Their new book written with Alexander Vasiliev entitled Spies, The Rise and Fall of the KGB in America has received wide attention this summer. Along with positive reviews in magazines and newspapers ranging from the Wall Street Journal to the New Republic and the New Yorker, it has drawn angry denunciations from admirers of I.F. Stone defenders of Alger Hiss, and left-wing bloggers unwilling to confront the legacy of American communist support for Soviet espionage. Harvey Clur and John Haynes, welcome to Front Page Interview. Tell us a, a little bit about how the left is still denying the undeniable evidence you have revealed. Clur says... There has been an outpouring of rage at the possibility that I.F. Stone could ever have worked for Soviet intelligence, despite abundant evidence in Vasiliev's notebooks that he did so, evidence that gives context to earlier allegations made by General Oleg Kalugin. 
Stone's defenders have taken several tacks. One is to assert with absolutely no evidence that the documents implicating Stone must be disinformation. Cunningly inserted by Alexander Vasiliev more than a decade ago, so he and we could traduce Stone in 2009. What has been the most pathetic denial? Possibly the silliest one made by a left-wing blogger and picked up by Myra McPherson, one of Stone's biographers, has been the claim that a document reporting that relations with Stone had, quote, entered the channels of normal operational work, unquote, did not mean he was cooperating with the KGB because when you Google that phrase, the only hits are from our article. Apparently, spy agencies are only supposed to use language approved by the left. Front page says, and I'm sure another tactic of denial has simply been to ignore your findings. Clure says, of course. Other clerk critics have simply just refused to deal with the evidence, asserting that because he was so independent, Stone could not have cooperated with the KGB, even though they admit that during this period, 1936 to 1939, he was a devoted fellow traveler and apologized for all of Stalin's crimes. A handful of writers like Amy Knight, who has never found a source on Soviet intelligence she trusts, have tried to minimize or deny the vast extent of Soviet espionage revealed in the notebooks, meaning Vasily's notebooks. Predictably, The Nation magazine, a left, hard left magazine, Huffington Post, hard left crap, Eric Alderman, hard left crap, Glenn Greenwald, I don't know who that is, and others reflexively deny that the Soviet Union recruited hundreds of Americans to spy. How can you deny it? The evidence is overwhelming. A major part of the reason, I believe, is that acknowledging these facts would require them to rethink the entire mythology of the McCarthy era, and that is something they are not prepared to do.